Hi guys and welcome. So this session is entitled How Drums and Bass Work Together Mark II. In our previous session we looked at how the kick drum and the bass guitar will often match rhythms so that the bass part will stick to the chords of the song but it will only play in the same rhythms as the kick drum. Let's have a listen to that example. So we can hear there how the accents on the kick drum are being matched clearly by the notes on the bass guitar. Now in this next bit here, what I want to show you is that that isn't always the case, okay? That is a common approach, but sometimes the role of the bass is to hold a very steady, consistent rhythm while the drums do something a little bit different in terms of the kick drum. They might create some syncopation where you have, where you have accents on the offbeat. So what we're going to do here is we start off by getting a new section of drums here. Now, if you don't have one of those, all you do is select the one you've used previously, press Command C, and then make sure your cursor is lined up with bar nine, or the next bar that you want the new section to start, click on there and press Command V, and that will paste a new bit of drums on here, and that's what I've done here. So, for this particular one, what I've done here, let's just have a listen, the kick drum only comes in, you can see it coming down there, and it only comes in quite sparse, okay? So the bass line would be fairly dull and not really contribute much if it only hit at those points. Have a listen. So as you can hear, the kick drum doesn't really play such a driving role in this. It's mostly the snare and snimbles that do. So what we're going to do in that case is the bass is going to now just match the quarter note rhythm of those snares. So you can either use the same order of notes previously. In the example I did, it went A, F, G, C. All right, I'm going to change it up and I'm going to go F, G, A, G. So I'm not going to use a C in this one. So I'm going to record my first loop here and I'm going to, yeah, so that's the way we go. Have a listen. So I've recorded that. I'm going to press Q, which pulls everything perfectly into time. And then I'm going to select my loop and loop it over. That's the first part of what we're going to do today. Let's have a listen. We'll hear how the snare and the bass now lock in and form the driving rhythm. And you can hear how the kick drum just kind of sneaks in in between beats there and helps give us a feeling like the song's rushing and moving forward. All right. So once we've created that, what we're then going to do over here, we're going to select our drums, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it in on our next bar. Oh, I've had a fail, I selected the bass. So here, I'm gonna select that one there, copy, and then I'm gonna to go to here. Make sure you got your drum track selected and you're to right on the start of the next bar. There it is. So now I've got my next drum section in. I'm gonna change my drum slightly and I'm going to, instead of doing quarter notes, I'm gonna do eighth notes. So instead of having on the bass, I'll have I'm going to keep my same pattern of F, G, A, G, but you could choose to change if you want to. But first of all, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manipulate whatever rhythm, uh, beat I had there. I'm going to make it more complex. All right, now, now there's a lot more kick drums in there. All right, I'm going to move that back a little bit because I don't want the kick drums to go crazy. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now I'm going to do my rhythms with quarter, uh, quarter eighth notes along with it. Have a listen. Cool. So now we've created three different ways that the bass could interact with the drums. So we have our follow the kick drum. We have our straight quarter notes. And we have 
have our eighth notes. Cool guys, so you go ahead and have a go at creating a version that features each of those and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Bye for now.